Are Europe's banks really in big trouble here? They're, they're challenged at present. The, the whole of the structure of the euro area and the euro, uh, European single market was to enable cross-border flows of this kind to, to take place. What's happened is that we found that borrowers borrowed more than uh, was expected or planned. Circumstances have changed. The lenders have got caught out. We now see a sort of negotiation between the borrowers, who clearly don't want to adjust more than they have to, take bigger pay cuts, and, they, and the lenders who will want to get back as much as they can. And, and so there will be an ongoing negotiation um, to try and see where you know, deals can be done. All right, so you say circumstances have changed. How do the banks need to adapt to that? But the banks now have got concerns, serious concerns, coming from those who placed funds with them, people who've uh, bought their bonds, um, and they need to restore confidence in them. They are, of course, undertaking a lot of measures themselves, um, but in some cases, uh, as happened uh, a couple of years ago, uh, governments have needed to step in uh, to provide the confidence to banks so they can continue operating. And they have to continue operating because that's what makes the economy tick over. Right. So what needs to happen then to restore market confidence in the banks? Do we need to see a recapitalization to the tune of 200 billion euros? That seems to be the figure that many analysts and economists are quoting. Do we need to see recapitalization on that scale for this to essentially blow over? The numbers are, are difficult to judge. Yeah. I mean, they, uh, all these estimates of shortfalls in balance sheets are, are, are sort of assumptions. You know, you talk about haircuts, this is a, today's market price uh, of a, a debt that mm. may not fall due for 10 years. So getting, getting, the accuracy doesn't exist in these numbers. You know, it's, it's a presumption. So, and and yeah. so the amount of, of funds that the markets will expect um, may change over time. What governments have done in the past has shown they're ready to provide capital mm. um, to the extent necessary to restore confidence. You describe a very fluid situation where it's almost as though the goalposts are constantly moving. So if there is such a lack of clarity, in that case, will recapitalization help resolve very much? Well, uh, if the recapitalization or the promise of recapitalization is sufficient, uh, and governments, in a way, have got uh, the resources of their taxpayers to stand behind the banks at the last resort. So, that, so they can mm. do this. Um, but equally, governments don't want to uh, commit their taxpayers unnecessarily. And that's precisely the problem right yeah. now. It's all very well for that sort of guarantee mm. to be there, even if it is an implicit one, mm. which may or may not boost investor confidence. But right now there seem to be some serious political divisions when it comes to this. I mean, we're seeing disagreement even on whether the recapitalization should be done on, on a national level or whether it should be Europe-wide. So talk to me about how much the, the political divisions are, are an obstacle to any agreement on this. Well, there will be political decision, uh, divisions on this, which is why it's going to take several more weeks uh, within the euro area to sort this out. Um, the taxpayers in one country are going to be very reluctant to bail out banks that they think belong to somebody else. Mm. Um, equally, um, in, a, in a number of countries, uh, the domestic situation is quite, quite fragile. So some kind of European solidarity um, may uh, be necessary and may make sense. So there's going to be a negotiation, that's what's going to happen over the next few weeks, about how much a national taxpayer is going to be stand behind their banks and the extent to which the, you know, the common good of Europe uh, means that some kind of common funding makes sense. So I, I think this is a very natural political debate. All right, so just a quick final question to you, Mr. Green. If we don't get that sort of agreement, mm. what are we heading towards? We're already seeing uh, Dexia, the latest victim of the debt crisis. What comes next? Are we going to see Europe's Lehman moment? Um, not necessarily. I think governments are very sensitively attuned to the, to the difficult. They will want to make sure uh, that banks can right. pay. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining us this morning. David Green, former head of international policy at UK Financial Services Authority.